Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Preparing for God's Judgments for the Wicked. So it's like God has to bring judgment to the house of God first, to us, to try to get sin out of our life, to try to get us better prepared for his judgments coming on the wicked later. So that we don't apostatize in the trouble coming for the wicked later. So a lot of people try to ask you the question, what are you supposed to do to prepare for this trouble coming in the future, like the Great Tribulation or something? So I'll try to answer some of the things God's taught me about preparing for his judgments for the wicked. Well, the best thing to do is <laughs> ask God questions, get an answer back. What should I do to prepare God? And the best thing to prepare is just to get more serious about obeying God, building your faith in God. It's like uh, getting rid of your plans for what you want to do in this wicked world and try to find out what God's plans are for you in it. It's like we can make our plans to uh, build our little, little selfish kingdoms for ourselves here on earth and then when... Uh, judgment hits, it could be economic collapse, we lose all that stuff. Instead of understand, trying to hear from God, what, does the, what will the future bring, Jesus? It's like a vision I had. It's just like asking God, what does the future look like, Jesus, and getting an answer back. So I had this vision. I was sitting beside Jesus on a park bench. I, I asked him the question, what does the future look like, Jesus? And he said to me, Economic collapse, famine, rioting, apostasy, and World War Three. And I was kind of frightened by that, or said, that doesn't sound so great a future. But then it turned into a vision of me dancing with Jesus around World War Three, and uh, there's people getting shot, and tanks, and bombs going off. <laughs> And Jesus just says to me over dancing, don't let it bother you, I control it. And then I felt peace. So it's learning, if you're going to prepare for God's judgments on the wicked, which they're not going to be able to handle, and it's just going to destroy them, because God destroys the wicked. But he helps the righteous out when he's punishing the wicked, like the story of Noah. So we have to try to be like a happy Noah. We've got to be hearing God say to us what we need to do to get prepared for what's coming and just do what he tells us to do. And trust in him fully to help us through it and bring good out of it for us and make us happy in it. Help us not be bothered by it. God has to punish wicked people. It's all through the Bible and days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah. Israel with Babylon slavery. We're in sort of like a satanic world empire, Babylon, and they're trying to take us into slavery. <laughs> but you could be like Daniel in slavery or Joseph in slavery. God's with you, helping you through it, bringing good out of it for you. So you got to believe that it's not just you going through all this stuff by yourself. You're doing it with Jesus. You're doing it with God, King of the universe. He's in control of the world inside of you. <laughs> like Paul said, it's no longer I live as Christ who lives in me. So you've got to have that understanding from God. I am with you. I control the world. i got to punish the wicked. I want to help you out like Noah in the ark or whatever. So he's trying to teach us, get his bride prepared for what's coming. It's like in my life, I've had lots of suffering in my life, uh, severe back pain, other pains and sufferings that you can't control. And uh, one, like I go to people to heal me sometime. And, um, I went and I asked somebody to pray for this eczema on my skin or whatever that's cropped up. It could be something in my stomach or something i got to fix to get rid of the eczema on my skin, but 
which could be good for me if I did that. Anyways, I went to this kind of faith healer guy, and he said to me, do you need anything healed? And I said, yeah, you can pray for my hand. So he prays for my hand. It doesn't get better. I asked God, why don't you heal when people pray for me and stuff like that? And he says, if I wanted you healed, I would have healed you long ago, <laughs> whether it's a back pain or skin eczema or whatever. It's like Joan Erickson in a wheelchair. God still hasn't healed her yet, but what she's looking for, what I'm looking for, is a deeper healing, not just the healing of the physical body or something. I want a deeper soul healing. I want to get closer to Jesus through my sufferings. Like it says in the Bible that uh, in a psalm, before I was afflicted, I went astray. And like Joan Erickson teaches, and God's trying to teach us, that uh, our sufferings can drive us closer to God. I'd rather have, like, um, like Joni Erickson could have, like, ten times more joy than me, and she's in a wheelchair. Um, I got a lot of pain in my life, but I'm still very joyful, because it's a spiritual joy. And it's like when you fast or something, you may be hungry or something like that, but you're, there's a sustaining uh, peace and joy that's coming from God. He's trying to train us how to lean on that, not on the strength of our body or the, the pain freeness of our life or something. He wants us to go through suffering like a Job experience and still handle it. You have to feel like Paul or something. It's not just me being persecuted. It's Jesus and me being persecuted. Like Jesus said, they hated me. They're going to hate you. And uh, so not to be bothered by persecution coming or physical suffering in your body now. Um, believe God's in full control of it. Like he could have his hand on the thermostat of your suffering. It doesn't have to. He could turn it up or turn it down. It's like Satan sifting in our life can be for our good. Because <laughs> uh, God gives greater rewards in heaven to those who suffer more for him. So we have to find out what his will is for us. If we've got illness in our life, we can pray, God, you want to take this away? If he doesn't, then give me grace to handle it. And don't let Satan say you can't be happy now because you got suffering in your life or the world's falling apart. <laughs> An economic collapse, or rioting, or apostasy, or World War Three, or something, or the Great Tribulation coming. If it's happening, God wants it to happen. He's in full control. <laughs> World War One, God was in full control. World War Two, God was in full control. World War Three, He'll be in full control still. It's like what it says in the scriptures, when Satan comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard of power against him. It's like Moses at the Red Sea. You don't need to see the miracle until you need the miracle. So if I don't need the Red Sea to part to save me from an enemy chasing me, then I don't need to see that yet. If I do need to have the Red Sea parted for me to escape from an Egyptian enemy, then it'll happen. God could heal me of all my diseases in the future. He could raise Joni Erickson out of a wheelchair healed. But then, it's like you need this for training. I'm not being persecuted by the Satanic World Empire government yet, put in prison like Paul or something, for being a Christian. So I've got to be attacked by Satan personally, maybe with eczema or back pain or something like that, and, and learn to handle it with God's help too. A lot of times, like when the Bible says love God with all your strength, you get pretty tired loving God. When it says that uh, God loves our weakness so that he can manifest more strength in us, like a Paul experience. Paul was asking for something he didn't like in his life to be taken away from God. And, God's, and Jesus said, no, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to give you the grace to deal with it. It's like something to humble us, to damage our pride or something. So that's the kind of healing we want, the, the, the greater healing, not physical healing, but a spirit healing, and a deeper soul healing, like Joan, Joni Erickson teaches about. So we need something like a Pentecost, 
when the trouble hits. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us in the, with power to deal with the trouble. And we need to believe God can do miracles, like a, a widow's jar of oil and flour never running out. Man in the desert for 40 years. There's nothing too difficult for God to do. He just wants us being close to him, getting our happiness from him, doing what he tells us to do. So my advice for people is learn to hear God's voice. Ask him questions. What does the future look like, Jesus? Get an answer back. Uh, what do you want me to do to prepare for the future, Jesus? Get an answer back. And Jesus would be saying, get a good relationship with me. Get going. Get into the word. Believe in it. Build your faith in me. Look at the miracles in the Bible and trust I can do that whenever I want to do it type stuff. Just because he's not healing everybody out of a wheelchair now doesn't mean he's he can't do that. He may not want to do that. Jesus said, blessed are those who believe me who don't see miracles. And like a Job experience. <laughs> but he can greatly reward us for doing the suffering things he wants us to do with his help to do it. Whatever God asks us to do, whatever suffering thing, he'll give us the help to do it. It's like looking at my life and... And I wouldn't be who I am without my pain and suffering I've gone through and trying to seek the grace of God to deal with it, to be strong in the Lord and the Holy Spirit rather than strong in the flesh. It's like Joan Erickson said, I wouldn't be the woman that I am now unless I went into a wheelchair type thing. She, she said something like, uh, I could have been remarried three times or something and lost my faith in God or something. But because of suffering in her life, it drove her closer to God. And she's full of spiritual joy, which she cherishes and uh, knows that that's what God rewards in heaven forever, suffering love. It's like Abraham not wanting to have to sacrifice his son, go through that pain but God testing him through it. So life is like a love test. It's like God trying to prepare his bride for heaven. Like Jesus said, only a few enter the kingdom of heaven, so you're not going to see too many real Christians handling this judgment and tribulation to come. Uh, but you can do it. It's like Noah. You can do it with God's help. Do it on the ark if you obey what he tells you to do to prepare for these things. And uh, don't try to do it yourself. <laughs> Let Jesus do it through you. It's like the footprints poem or something. Sometimes God has to carry you when all your, all your strength's gone, but he starts to give his strength that's miraculous. So these are some of the things we need to try to do to prepare for God's judgments coming for the wicked.